Welcome to the Passive In-House. We are going to give you a short tour. We hope you'll come back for the full tour with a docent at a time when we can gather again. The story of our town starts in Germany in 1764, when Detmar Vassy, the founder of Zillian Opel, was born. I'll call your attention to the pastel portraits in the corner. These were painted in 1785 on the occasion of Detmar's engagement to Wilhelmina Kellner, the wealthy and educated daughter of a senator, sister of the mayor of Frankfurt. The portraits were painted with the couple facing the same direction, looking to the future, as was the custom of the time. He was 21 and she was 17. These portraits were made 225 years ago and protected by the family in Germany through the wars in the 1950s. They were given to the family by the family in Germany to Lester Moore, the town historian, who in turn willed the portraits to the historical society. Detmar and Mina were married in 1785. They had eight children, four of whom lived to adulthood. Detmar was a merchant in Frankfurt and later sent as an envoy to the court of Napoleon in France. In 1800, Mina died. Detmar's business was failing, so leaving his children with their uncle, he left for America. He was able to purchase 10,000 acres in Western PA of depreciation lands for 25 cents an acre. Land had been given to the Revolutionary War soldiers in lieu of cash, and they sold cheap. His fortunes continued to improve when he later sold 4,000 of his acres for a good profit to Father Rapp. That land became Harmony, PA. Detmar built his home that he called Bassenheim, overlooking the Conoquinessing Creek. It was located near where the airport is today. Nothing remains of that home. On the easel, we have a sketch of his cats. To begin his town and attract settlers, he built a grist mill, brickyard, sawmill, ironworks. Part of the, fur the iron furnace ruins stand outside the town today. In 1807, Detmar returned to Germany, planning to bring his two oldest children back with him. He found his daughter Zaley engaged to Philippe Passivant. He thought Philippe an intelligent man of good character. The Passivant family was an old, cultured, and wealthy family of drapery merchants, originally from France. You'll notice in the corner between the windows several passive and ancestors portraits and on the organ portraits of Zélie and Philippe done later in their lives. Although Zélie was 20 when Detmar returned, a daughter could not marry unless her father gave permission. He agreed to give permission if she and Philippe would return with him. And as more incentive, he was naming the town for her, Zelianople, polis being the Greek word for city. Zelian and Philippe agreed, and a week after their wedding in 1807, they sailed from Amsterdam with Detmar and Zelie's brother Carl. The voyage was six weeks. After a short stay in Philadelphia, they traveled by Conestoga wagon to the wilderness of Western PA, arriving in late fall. Bassenheim was unfinished, and Zaley and Philippe awoke to find snow had fallen on the bed through cracks in the ceiling. They found life not as Detmar had described it. Philippe began building a log store on Main Street, and he and Zaley moved into rooms above it as soon as they could. They had left their aristocratic European life and faced hardship, deprivation, and hard work. Their faith strength, courage, and resourcefulness helped them to adapt to pioneer life in the wilderness. They began to build this house in 1808 and completed it in 1810. In the large display, display case here, we have artifacts from the store. We have Zaley's 1786 baby bonnet and her hymnal marked with F.W. Zaley for her given name, Federica Wilhelmina, and the nickname she adopted as a young girl. She used Zaley all her life, even to sign legal documents. Philippe and Zaley had five children, Emma, Sidney, Detmar, Virginia, and William Alfred. There are mementos from each of the children in the case. 
As we move to the dining room, you'll notice the floor change in height. The original home was two rooms, the dining room and parlor downstairs, and two bedrooms upstairs. The kitchen was in the basement with an outside entrance. The room we're leaving was an addition in 1820. The home was in the family for 150 years. Miss Emma, Zaley's granddaughter, was the last member of the family to live here. She died in 1956. The furniture in the dining room was purchased by Miss Emma in the 1920s. On the desk is a photograph of Miss Emma, who is remembered in town as a gentle, kind, and generous woman. This room was often used by Zaley for entertaining and wedding breakfasts were celebrated here. Weddings were held at 7 a.m. so the newlyweds could get there to their honeymoon in Pittsburgh, an eight-hour journey by horse-drawn vehicle. I'll call your attention to the chandelier. This fixture, fixture is half gas and half electric. In the early 1900s, the short-line trolley brought electricity to Zelianople. However, when cars shut down in the evening, the electricity stopped and then they'd use the gas. On the Etagere shelves, you'll notice the painted chocolate set. It was painted by Miss Emma. Other china pieces were painted by friends and neighbors. Painting china was a popular hobby in Victorian era, which was 1837 to 1901. We'll cross into the parlor and notice on the wall to the left the framed wreaths, another popular art form. One is made from goose feathers, the other from human hair, twisted on wires and formed into flower shapes. Victorians saw hair as a tangible way to remember loved ones. The hair from a deceased loved one was often made into jewelry. Wreaths, as this one, were made from the hair of the living as well. The spinning wheel was a practical piece of furniture. Wool was carded and spun into yarn that was knit or woven into cloth. Our mannequin is dressed in clothes worn by Zaley. She would prepare her own wool strips that were rolled into a ball and sent out to be woven into rugs of a design she furnished. Above the fireplace, we have an oil portrait of Detmar Bassey painted in 1792. It has been partially cleaned and restored. The mantle is of extinct Pennsylvania pine, the columns are cherry wood, and the baseboards poplar. The nine-piece fireplace insert was made at Bassenheim Furnace. It was original to the Buell house. Christian Buell's granddaughter, Jane Randolph, brought it to this house when she married Sidney, Philippe and Zaley's son. This room was also the music room. We have the piano Zaley brought for her daughter, Virginia, and the flute played by Sid. Portraits above the piano are of Zaley's children, Emma, Charles Sidney, called Sid, and William Alfred. These are the children that lived to adulthood. Detmar and Virginia died in their 20s. That concludes the tour of the downstairs. Now we'll move to the second floor.